You can build a wooden box and drill a big hole in it and call it a birdhouse, but it might not be a house that a bird will actually call home. Join me today as I discuss the many factors to consider when building a birdhouse and then show you how I make birdhouses of my own. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and this house that I just built should attract bluebirds to my garden. That's my goal. I know that this house should attract bluebirds based on the specifications I used when building it. Because birds, kind of like us, are choosy about where they want to live. They care about the size of the hole and the size of the house and how far off the ground it is. They're pretty picky, like us, at choosing where they want to raise their young. There are many birds in my area that like to live in houses. This house was up all last year, and it was host to a couple different generations of birds. Birds this year have already been active, and I can already see peeking out from some of the gaps some of the grass that they've been using to build a nest. I want to attract birds to my garden, partly because I like to develop a balanced ecosystem that benefits me and my plants and the animals in my environment, but also because the birds can help me in the garden. As many as 90% of bird species will eat insects during the time that they're raising their young. And so in spring, now, when they're building their nests and about to raise their young, I'm just starting to raise some of my plants in my beds. Well, I don't want insect pests to be eating those young plants. I'd rather have the birds eat those insect pests. So I'm more than glad to attract the birds to my garden. And by being selective in the type of houses that I build, I can choose which birds are most likely to come to my garden. That means I can actually choose birds that are not going to be eating my fruit because different birds have different diets. Instead, I can choose the birds that might be seed eaters so that later in the season, they're eating weed seeds. One less thing I have to worry about. And deciding on what kind of bird you're going to attract really comes down to what kind of house you're going to build. I'll put a link in the description below that will give you some very specific information about the bird houses and the birds that like those houses. Because there are some birds that won't live in a house. If you're trying to attract an American robin, well, they don't live in houses, so you're just wasting your time. But if you want to attract something like a bluebird, like I am, well, they prefer houses. And it really comes down to what the bird is looking for. Some birds like small houses, some birds like big houses. Some birds like houses that are lower, closer to the ground. Some birds like houses that are high off the ground. But probably the most important factor is the size of the hole because some birds will go through a hole that might be one and a quarter inches in diameter, and they won't live in a house with a hole that is one and a half inches in diameter. They are that specific about what they're looking for. So by looking at some of these recommendations as to the size of the house, the size of the hole, and how high off the ground to mount it, you can really focus in on the birds that you want in your garden. The house I'll show you how to build today is based on this basic design. This is the same house that I showed you earlier that's outside on my shed. The key part of this design is that the front opens up. This allows you to clean it from year to year. Cleaning the houses on a regular basis is not only better for the birds, it gives them clean conditions and helps avoid parasites and disease, but there are other things that will build homes inside these birdhouses as well. So you might need to come in and knock out a wasp nest occasionally. 
This is a pretty simple project, but it does require some knowledge of how to use tools and a little bit of experience in putting together the pieces. But I'll show you all the steps and you should be able to figure it out. We're just building a wooden box essentially, but we're being precise with the measurements. We have a back that is going to be longer so that we can mount it in a tree or on a wall. We've got a front, we've got a floor, we've got a roof, and we've got two sides. I printed this sheet from one of the links that I have below in the description. It gives the basic idea of how to put the house together. I also annotated here some of the specific information based on the birds I'd like to attract. I want to build a downy woodpecker house. Well, for that house, the floor should be about four inches by four inches. The house should have a height of eight to 10 inches. The hole should be about six to eight inches from the floor, and the hole should be one and a quarter inches. For my bluebird house, the floor should be about five inches by five inches. The house should have a height of eight to 12 inches. The hole should be six to 10 inches from the floor, and it should be one and a half inches in diameter. When I mount it, the bluebird house will be three to six feet from the ground, and the woodpecker house actually needs to be 10 to 20 feet from the ground. When I moved into this house a couple years ago, there was a section of fence that I took down, and it had these beautiful old cedar boards. So this is what I'm going to use to make my bird houses. It's aged, it looks nice and rustic for when I mount it outside, but also this rough texture can actually benefit the baby birds as they try to crawl out of the house up to the hole when they're learning to fly. This is wide enough that it's suitable for the houses that I'm planning to build. Depending on what you're building, you may need wider boards. So this is just under five and a half inches wide, which works out for me because I've measured the width and the width is just under half an inch. And so as you'll see when we put together, we need to subtract a half an inch for one side and half an inch for another side. And so a five and a half inch board, when I subtract that one inch of width, means that I can rip it down to about four and a half inches. So the floor of this house will be four and a half inches by four and a half inches, which is, which is just under the ideal for a bluebird, but it should be good enough for them to like the house. I'll make my first cut 33 inches. And I'll rip this piece down to four and a half inches. I make the first cut at four and a quarter inches. I'll make the next cut at 16 inches. And I'll do the last cut at 10 inches. Back to the original board, I'll make a cut at 11 and a half inches. And another cut at 
to match these two pieces. For this cut, I want to angle about 20 degrees. And I will make a cut. Measure six inches. Make another cut. This last cut, I set my blade at 20 degrees and then with the 11 and a half inch pieces. Cut an angle for the sides of the birdhouse. Now we're ready to build. With all of the pieces cut, now it's time to assemble. And there's no glue involved, it's just the pieces and I'll nail them together using these inch and a quarter finish nails. A tip to help make the assembly go a little bit easier is to take one of the finish nails and put it into your drill. And we'll use this like a little drill bit later on. I'll start the assembly with the side pieces first. And to make a pilot hole for the nails that are going to go into the sides, I use my drill. These pilot holes will just help keep the wood from splitting and they're in about a quarter inch from the edge. And to make the assembly a little bit easier too, I'll go ahead and start putting the nails in these pre-drilled holes so that I'm not working any harder than I need to. So this is the back and I'll be mounting the sides to the back. I went ahead and made a mark two inches from the bottom of the back. And now I just line up the side, even with the back. And one side is done. So then I do the same thing with the other side piece, lining it up with the nails already in place. And the birdhouse is coming together. I want the floor of this house to be eight to 10 inches below the top, which means I need to mount about an inch from the bottom of the sideboard. So I just make those marks. I'll make the same marks on the outside of the house. And then we can slide in the floor. Now remember, which side of the pencil marks you need to be on. And so I want the floor to be on the bottom of this pencil mark because this pencil mark is eight to 10 inches and that's where the bottom of the floor needs to be. And so with it lined up with the pencil marks on the inside, I can now use the pencil marks on the outside as a guide for pre-drilling some holes. And then I'll go ahead and start attaching the floor to the sides.
So now with the sides attached to the floor, I can go ahead and attach the roof next. Now because I cut the roof at 20 degree angles, it'll fit perfectly on the top and give me a pretty tight fit. At this point, I'll go ahead and put the front piece in just so that we have the proper spacing between the sides. And I want to do that before I attach the roof because it's possible that these sides could squeeze together. And then if we put the roof on without having the proper spacing, we might not be able to fit that front piece into place. And so I went ahead and pre-drilled some holes and now we're just going to attach the roof. And so now with the roof on, we can go ahead and take the front piece and drill the hole for the birds to come in and out. And so I'll be using a one and a half inch hole saw. I marked a line seven and a half inches from the bottom of the board. And then I'm marking the center line. So when I cut the hole, it'll be about six inches. The bottom of the hole will be six inches from the top of the floor. So now with the hole dug, we're ready to mount the front. There are a couple of very important factors to consider when putting in this front piece. If we put it all the way up so that it's flush with the roof, now we won't be able to open it. We actually need to lower it from the edge of the roof so that when we put it on a hinge, it will clear the edge of the roof. So that means we'll actually mount it about one inch below the edge of the side. That way it will be able to swing up and close when it comes time to clean it. The other factor is that we need to make sure that we mount it with the little hinge I'll be working on next so that it slides up. That's why we've left room between the bottom of the floor and the bottom of the side pieces. I made a mark 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom and now I'll drill some pilot holes again. And I'll put this front piece in place, line it up so I know that I have clearance from that overhang of the roof, and then I'll drive in a couple nails, and these will end up being the hinge pieces for the birdhouse front. And so now the other side's done and those two nails now form a hinge to lower the front and put it back into place. Now this is much too loose of course for the bird so now we'll need to put a screw in and a single screw on one of the sides is enough to hold the front piece in place. And then each year I'll just undo the screw and open the birdhouse to clean it out.
And then to make mounting easier, I'll go ahead and pre-drill a hole on the top of the back piece and the bottom of the back piece. And that's ideal if you want to screw it onto a surface. Now, the one I did recently for a tree, I drilled two holes because we were feeding wire up through those two holes and then wrapping that wire around the tree. But that's it. Now this birdhouse is complete and it's ready to go outside. I like the rustic look. You could easily use brand new wood to build a birdhouse like this and then paint the wood whatever color you want. The birds don't really care what color it is. They're just concerned that the height of the floor is ideal. In this case, eight to 10 inches. The floor is the right size. This is about four and a half by four and a half. And that the hole, a one and a half inch hole in this case, is six to eight inches above the floor. Let's go mount this outside. I want to mount one of my birdhouses on the side of my garage here. So I'm going to place it about six feet high and through the pre-drilled holes, I'll just put in some wood screws. This birdhouse is all ready for the birds. I mounted this house here on my garage because it oversees my garden. It's a perfect spot for the birds to come out and have an insect breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can also mount them on poles or as I've done recently, built a house and then had it installed in a tree. Whatever you choose, a wall, a house, a pole, even on the ground, match the house to your bird and you'll be able to pretty much guarantee yourself some success. If you like this video and are interested in other garden projects that I've done, well go ahead and check out one of these other videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.